Hey guys, welcome back. Today is video number four in a 10 part series. I hope you're enjoying these. I'd love to hear your comments. I wanna give a shout out to Midwest CMA, Midwest Country Music Association and all my friends. Uh, they're doing great things and I'm loving being a part of that community. If you haven't heard about them, go check them out. You can find them online, you find them on Facebook. That's Midwest Country Music Association. So songwriting took me all the way from my hometown in Harlan County, Kentucky to Lexington, Kentucky, and then later to Nashville where I signed my first publishing deal with Major Bob Music. So I moved to Nashville as a songwriter and I was pretty confident going into it because I'd secured my first publishing deal and I thought, wow, this is gonna be a cakewalk. After I signed my publishing deal, it was right, 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 just writing all the time. And when I took my first batch of songs in and played them, I thought that they would like half of them. They barely liked one song. So I left there feeling pretty deflated, but that whole time that I was with the publishing company was such a learning experience. I got to write with some really awesome hit writers and I learned so much from them. So I wanna pass along some of this information to you in hopes that you will grab something and it will help elevate your songwriting a little bit. All right, so writing songs. Like anything, it starts with a great idea. And this is the thing that was so hard for me because as a young songwriter, you write songs about anything and everything because it's just flowing from you. A great song has to start with a great idea. So spend a lot of time thinking of great ideas and that will lead you to a great song, I guarantee it. I don't know about you guys, but I would rather write one good song per year as opposed to writing 100 songs that I'm not in love with two weeks later and I don't even think about anymore. I mean, writing a lot is a good practice, but at some point I feel like it's important to kind of just dig down and really just block out the noise and find those ideas that are just great and just dive into them and take as much time as you need until that song is just perfect. When I think of great ideas, I think of a song like Jamie Johnson's song, In Color. That song was a great idea and it was just right from the get-go, it painted such great pictures. and. The meaning was awesome. You had the contrast of the black and white and the color, and then how he wove in how they were scared to death and the war, and that song was strong. The idea was strong to begin with. And that song crossed over genres, it crossed over age groups, and it just covered such a broad range of audience. It was just a great song, and it started with a great idea. All right, let's talk about a hook, okay? Not a fish hook. But a hook is what hooks you, what grabs you, it grabs your attention. It's the thing that reoccurs again and again on a song and it gets stuck in your head. It's like those little earworms, you know. Uh, those are what hit songs are kind of made of. They're made of great ideas, hooks, catchy melodies, and lyrics that paint pictures with words. Shake it off, okay? Me personally, I've heard it a billion times. But there's lots of little musical hooks and melodical hooks in there too. That's what people say, ooh, ooh, right? That's what people say, ooh, ooh. It's a hook within a verse. It's not even the chorus hook, okay? But it's, the, it's another part of the song that gets stuck in your head. It's so memorable every time you hear it. It's just another hook in the song that keeps you engaged and helps get stuck in your head. If you wanna do something fun sometime, just take a song, break it down line by line, listen to it musically, lyrically and see if you can pick out the hooks that are there to support the main hook and you'll start to see how these songs are broken down in sections and it's like a little puzzle it all fits together and it all makes for one really good song all right painting pictures with words i've had the pleasure of writing with some great writers and one of my friends buffy lawson she's an awesome writer awesome singer she said it best when we would write together we'd get to the verses and she'd say okay let's start putting some furniture in here. And I looked at her kind of sideways like, what? So I always liked the way she would make the reference to the house and putting furniture in the rooms. The great idea being the foundation of the house and then the furniture would be the pictures that you paint in the lyrics. When you paint pictures with words in a song, it helps them take shape and color and texture. A lyric like, I saw a beautiful sunset setting over the water, it's a nice thought, but it doesn't really have a lot of depth and it really doesn't paint a lot of pictures. If you take that same lyric and apply this thought process, pick up your brushes and your paint and paint some pictures with your words, the lyric could go something like this. I stared into a fire red summer sunset dancing on the silent still emerald water. When your lyrics have words like this that paint pictures in your mind, it takes it to a whole other level and you can see where this person is. 
Big shout out to Matt, Erica, and Megan. I'll include their links in this video. I appreciate the contribution. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you would, go and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're up on all the new content that I post. Coming up next week, video number five is about guitar, so I'm excited about that one. Until then, you guys stay safe. Hope you make it through this quarantine. I can't wait to get back out there and meet some more people. Bo Pro!